Hello friends, and today I am bringing you another Archage Guide video. This time we will be focusing on the Executioner class. Right now we are in the 2.5 patch, so therefore this class guide right here is for the 2.5 patch. If you're here after 2.5, I can't say that this guide is going to work for you 100%. also want to say that this is personal preference, just my playstyle, so I'm not saying that this is how Executioner has to be played. If you want to tweak it to your liking or you play it a different way, to each his own. If you're used to playing a class like Dark Runner, Shadow Blade, or any other rogue class, playing this class will feel very familiar. It's a very similar playstyle. So you have your basic combos, which you usually go in with your Stalker's Mark, you close the gap, you overwhelm, Shadow Smite, Precision Strike, that kind of stuff. What makes this class so good in 2.5 is that Occultism has been buffed a bit. So instead of just having the anti-fear through stillness and the silence that you get from that skill, you also have fear immunity and slow immunity for 10 seconds now with retribution. That gives you enough time to kill your enemy without being stopped by some of the most used CC in the game right now. It's more viable than ever and that is the reason why I'm finally making the guide. There's two different ways that I play this class. There's a 1v1 build and an open world PvP build. Right now I'm going to show you guys the 1v1 build and this is the basic build. There's two skills right here that aren't needed. The first passive battle rage skill and the fifth passive shadow play skill. I usually leave those open you guys leave those open for yourself when making this build. I would take every other skill and then just choose what you want to put those two points into your playstyle. But if I'm going to be doing open world PvP, then I would put one of those skill points into the crows. I don't rely on the crows for 1v1s because honestly, it takes up too much time when trying to pull off my main combos, and by that time the enemy may break out of my Hell Spear CC, or it might just fuck me up depending on ping or lag and I'll just be behind and I won't be able to execute my kill because of the crows. So it's not really needed, but if you're going to be doing open world PvP to benefit your group or guild, when you're going in and you're going to hell spears all your enemies and CC all of them, you can crows the ones that are CC and poison them, so it'll just help your guild out, even if you die. So in this class, you have your typical battle rage and shadow play skills, and you also have your occultism tree, which you rely on for the CC and anti-CC. You don't really need to rely on occultism to win every match. A lot of 1v1s, I just play the match and reserve my occultism skills in case I need them. So you can have the times when you actually go in to kill an enemy and you use Hell Spears to your advantage to CC them and execute your combo. Or, depending on the enemy you're playing against, they may have anti-CC against Hell Spears. So you can go in and reserve it for the moment that you're able to use it without them having immunity to Hell Spears. Or you can use it when your enemy's least expecting it. You fight for, I don't know, a few seconds, a minute, or however long the match goes, and then all of a sudden you just pop the Hell Spears when they least expect it because you didn't use it at the beginning of the match. So before I show you guys the combos and some of the mobs and how it works in arenas, I'm going to explain to you guys how to gear your character when it comes to playing the Executioner. The one thing I like about Arc Age is that you can do whatever the fuck you want, you can play how you want, you can use whatever kind of weapons or gear you want. So you don't have to be in leather for this class, but it is recommended. If you're going to be doing open world or 1v1s, you're prepared for both types. You can go against plate wearers or you can go against cloth and you'll still do good against both. If you're in plate or just cloth, you're going to get shitted on by the counter. But when it comes to choosing what kind of gear to wear, I would go with a four piece of a crafted set that you like, whether it be Delphinat Lightning or Desert to be more tanky or Flame to have more strength and DPS, and then I would use three piece obsidian. The three pieces of obsidian that I would use are the same as in my Shadow Blade video. I would go with the headpiece for more damage, I would go with the fist for more crit, and I would go with the boots for more parry. The more parry you have, the more your battle rage skills reset. Therefore, the more you can execute your combos, close the gap, and win the fight. If you can't use your skills, all you'll have is triple slash, and that's just not enough to kill your enemy sometimes. So dual wielding, having extra strength, and having those boots that give you the extra parry is very important for this class. You can play whatever you want, like I said, but this is just the proper build for it. If you notice, I'm not even using a crafted set. I'm using an Aurora belt, I'm using Aurora guards, and I'm using just obsidian. I didn't go with the crafted route. My character has changed a lot since then. I am not properly geared for this class, but it works. I still have a lot of good gems and I still have some decent leather. When it comes to the weapon, I would recommend dual wielding, but it's personal preference. I like Nadachis. I think they're the sexiest weapons in the game. And two-handers have been buffed since 2.5. Uh, I believe they have more attack speed. They have defense penetration, which is super important because a lot of tanks are in this patch. So I would suggest that you guys dual wield. And if you're going to dual wield, I would use a short spear for the defense penetration and a katana offhand for the crit. A katana and sword is also viable as well for the parry and the crit. Just depends on what you're facing more of on your server. So if you're going against more tanks, a long spear, a short spear, an adachi, 
great sword, all of that shit works. When it comes to the gems, you want to have your usual resilience, toughness, you want to put some parry into your fist, use the attack speed gems that you get from the prestige shop on your headpiece, and when it comes to the boots, I would recommend movement speed because we all know that that's meta. For me, I'm using physical defense just to be a bit more tanky, but I'm probably going to switch over after today. For other pieces like the wrist, I would just roll with more defense, and like I said, depending on what you're facing on your server, more magic DPS or more melee, I would go with those kind of defense gems. For accessories, I would use accessories to give you more attack speed and more parry. So I'm using Gale Earrings and Flame Rings. On your instrument and your bow, I would use Defense Penetration Gems because that just helps you wreck shit. Now we're going to talk about actually using these combos and killing enemies. So I'm going to show you guys a couple of examples on the mobs. Like I said, there's two different ways that I play the 1v1 arenas. So the first way is really aggressive. I usually start off by using Urgency as long as there's a gap between me and the enemy kind of when you first come out the gates. And if you're in open world PvP, just use it when you're safe because this does take casting time. And this will decrease the cooldown on your occultism skills by 9 seconds, which means you can use stillness to get out of fear more, and also means you can pop retribution more. You're going to start off with urgency, and then you're going to go in with a stalker's mark, and then you're going to pop retribution. The reason why I pop it right here is to make sure I can get the full effect when the time is right. If you pop it before stalker's mark, you're kind of wasting some seconds on the retribution. So I'm going to stalker's mark, retribution, close the gap between me and the enemy with a skill like tiger strike, and then I'm going to hell spears to CC them, and then overwhelm, shadow smite, precision strike, backdrop, behind enemy lines to close the gap and trip them again, get some attacks off, and then charge triple slash so that I can keep my enemy trip and also DPS them to death. Another way I play is by having my occultism skills on reserve. So as you can see in the last example I showed you, I used Hell Spears to my advantage and played more aggressively by using that in the starting combo to CC them and then keep them tripped and kill them. But you won't be able to do this all the time because some enemies will use Shrug It Off to make sure you can't CC them with Hell Spears. And if you pop it in the beginning, sometimes it's just not the best idea because you're probably going to get wrecked. But if you can use Hell Spears when your enemy least expects it, then it can give you the advantage on the fight. So if you wait to use Hell Spears until the time is right, like maybe once you get tripped, and then the second you get up you pop Hell Spears, they won't expect it and then you can just go in and wreck them. So at certain times, holding your Hell Spheres and keeping it on reserve is better, but playing aggressive is also good. Maybe you can switch up both when going in 1v1s. For open world PvP, it's pretty much the same, but like I said, I would go with Crows. We all know that our playstyle switches up in open world PvP because you have multiple targets or you focus one target. So if I'm going to be doing open world PvP, I'm most likely going to be worrying about helping my team out more and not just focusing on kills for myself. So I'm definitely going to be using my AoEs much more like behind enemy lines, backdrop to extend that gap between us. I'm going to be popping Hell Spears and following it up with the Crows. Because remember, if you're going to do open world PvP, I would recommend putting one of those extra two skill points we have into the Crows. When it comes to choosing your weapon, it's up to your playstyle, honestly. Don't let people tell you what kind of weapons you have to use, what you should play. Fuck that. This is Arc Age. It's Sandbox. Play how you like. Play what you want to play in. Use plate if you want. Use cloth. Just remember that leather prepares you for both fights. Maybe you're a caster and you just want to switch to this class every once in a while. Maybe you're a plate wearer but you just want to switch to this roguelike build every once in a while without defense. It still works, but just remember it's most viable in leather. So I hope that this guide helped you out. Thank you guys so much for all the likes on the Shadow Blade video. Hopefully we can do just as well on this one. If it helped you out at all, please hit it with a like. And subscribe to the channel for more Arc Age content and more MMORPG coverage. If you'd like to read up more on this guide or more on Arc Age or just any games in general, please hit up my website, savagesouls.ninja. We are always recruiting writers, and if you would like to contact me personally, Twitter and my Discord is the way to do so.
See you guys in the next one.